What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys the, how to use a noise gate in Logic Pro. Uh, I'm going to show you also how to use sidechain with it. A lot of people are familiar with sidechain compression, but uh, it's not often talked about you can sidechain gate something. So it's a cool, almost like an inverse relationship to the uh, sidechain compression. And uh, it's a pretty cool tool if you want to add an extra element exclusively when another sound is playing. Things like that. There are a lot of cool creative ways. So I'm going to pop right into it. By the way, forgive me if you hear the uh, voices in the other room. We're watching Game 3 of the NBA Finals, and I decided to pop over here and make a quick video. Um, so here hey, we are. Here's a sample of it. Hey, baby, hey. See. Hey, baby, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, beautiful girl. Okay, so I'm going to put on a noise gate for this. Essentially what a gate does is it creates a floor for your sound. So if it reaches a certain uh, low enough decibel, it you can pretty much cut it right off. So this is good, uh, for example, if you're recording something and maybe there's a lot of little white noise in the background, you can use a gate to essentially remove um, any noise that's happening when you're not speaking, essentially by adjusting the parameters. So here is an example of that. Just gonna loop a little part. Hey, baby, hey. So here we have the threshold. This is essentially that floor. You get to choose where the floor is. So you'll see that the higher I bring it, hey, baby, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, beautiful girl. Hey, baby, hey. So you can see right here it says open and close. So open is when the sound that has the gate on it is playing above this minus 18 dBs, for example. And then when it says close, it means it's below that and it's cutting it off. And here the reduction is what you can choose of how much you're cutting off. For example, if I only want it to go down a few dBs, right now it's at max, which is 100 dBs, which means it cuts it all the way off if it gets to that level below 18 dB or negative 18. So, for example, if I bring it up to, I only want it to drop down 20 dBs. Hey, baby, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, beautiful girl. Hey, baby, hey. See. So you can see you can kind of adjust whether you want the entire thing to get cut off or just a little portion of it, make it a little quieter when I blower reaches it. So also down here you have your attack and hold and release just like most other um, types of plugins and effects. So the attack essentially it, it's, it, it delays the, uh, the effect to hit once the input is registered at this the, the DB that we've set for the threshold. So for example if we want to make it a super slow attack that means once, you, once it goes below 18 it's going to take 41 milliseconds for the gate to start opening. Or at least I believe it's going to take 41 seconds for it to reach full gate. So it's going to take that minute, like 41 milliseconds to go gradually into the gate. So let's hear it. Hey, baby, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, beautiful girl. Hey, baby, hey. See. So you can hear instead of being immediate, it kind of glides into it. And the hold, of course, is, you know, once it is registered, whether it goes above or below, there's going to be a hold of, of where the gate is currently at before it drops off. For example, for 360 milliseconds. And then the release, once it drops, it pretty much is how long is it going to take for it to go all the way back to the normal sound pre-gate. Um, and then look, the look ahead is pretty much... Um, how much time you want it to determine, um, it pretty much predicts the clip and to determine where we want the, uh, the gate to be. So it's kind of hard to explain, but you, if you play around with it, you'll get a pretty good feel for the different, um, you know, how to use these different parameters and to make it sound cool. I don't really know what this hysteresis um, meter or this fader is. Hey, baby, hey. Hey, 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 beautiful girl. Hey, baby, hey. Okay. Hey, hey. So now the second thing I'm going to show you guys with this gate 
is how to use sidechain with it. So this is really cool and it can be used very creatively. So I have this little kick. So I'm going to use this as the sidechain. If you guys don't know how to uh, do sidechain on anything, I'll show you right here. So this is the kick. We go here, we pick a bus for it that is not being used. I always pick the same one, bus 10, just because it's easy for me to then look to see what side chain based on if it's bus 10 or if it's a different bus, which would just be a different bus track. Um, then you're going to want to set it all the way up to zero, exactly zero dB, just so the levels that are being relayed on the bus are the same as what's actually being input. Um, this is a little tricky thing that you have to remember. So by doing this and creating this bus, I am essentially doubling the um, output for this kick note. So for example, you'll hear right here. You'll see down here in my uh, mixing, or my mix board, when it's off, this is just the regular um, input. And when I put it on, you'll see down here, aux3, that adds it. So what you're going to want to do in the case of side chaining something, you're going to want to delete this. And delete anyways. That way you're still putting the input on a bus, but it's not uh, doubling the, the input. This is super important if you want to kind of keep track of your project. And then what you're going to do there, now that the kick is bus 10, you're going to go back to the noise gate up here. You can see the sidechain, click it, bus 10. So since I made a bus, that will automatically populate as one of the options. And let's see. So now, I'm just going to record a little quick pattern just so I don't have to keep going back to it. So you see that it, um, the gate interacts with the kick to where rather than having the input of the actual track uh, be what dictates or what the threshold hits, it's this kick. So essentially this kick is taking place for uh, the threshold to where now the entire gate is reacting based off of the kick sound and it's affecting the vocal. So this is a super cool thing. I like to sometimes do, for example, if I have a hi-hat and I put a bus on the hi-hat and then I sidechain like white noise or something onto the hi-hat to add an extra element or layer or something like that. It's pretty cool. And then just like, you know, you'd be doing it without the sidechain, you can affect all these parameters. Pretty cool, right? Seems like a cool tool. Um, you know, I use it in rare circumstances. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I use this tool on every single song that or project that I work on. But this is a very cool trick to have up your sleeve if you want to add like an impact or something. Another way I like to use it if I have like a melody, but then I have a chord progression. Sometimes it's cool to sidechain gate that chord progression to the melody if the melody is more stabby and the chord progression is a little more sustained. It's a cool way to kind of um, have the two sounds kind of interact with each other, much the same way that I would sidechain the two, except in the opposite sense. Uh, so yeah, guys, I just want to show you guys this quick tool on uh, the gate in Logic and how to do uh, sidechain with it. If you guys found this video helpful, if you learned something, please help me out uh, by liking this video, commenting on it, showing some love, and subscribing. I gotta go move my car. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, you guys liking and commenting and showing, you know, activity really uh, helps me out and inspires me and lets me know what else I should be doing in terms of what videos I should be making. Uh, so yeah, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. So in that case, like, comment, subscribe. Bye.